Okay, as you can see, up next is the minigun. A lot of you have been wondering how I put the minigun together, how did I get it to work, and well, I'm just going to quickly go over this because I can't go over everything. It's just going to take way too long to try to explain it. But I'm just going to go over the basics. As you can see, it's nothing but a bunch of cylinders, and I just kind of modeled with just the basic shape of a minigun, nothing too special. And I placed a cylinder as a child of a cloner object. There's a cylinder. Nothing special about it, just kind of scaled it out, elongated it to make it look like a long barrel. I put it as a child of the cloner object. The cloner object is then set to the radial mode, as you can see, it's placing them in a radial pattern. The count is set to six. You can take that up to add more barrels or less barrels, however many you want. Radius just determines how far out they go. End and st uh, the start and end angle here. I really wouldn't mess with those because those features really aren't going to work too well with a minigun. Uh, if we look through here, to take the end angle down, you can see it just determines where they start and where they end. So that feature really isn't going to work too well for a gun. So you can leave those alone. The feature that you're going to be uh, mostly concerned about is the offset setting. If you take the offset and move it, see the barrel start spinning. So this is what you want to play around with. So you can see I've already made some keyframes here to get it to spin. All you have to do is just make a keyframe, go down to your timeline. Mine is going to be just here 90 frames for now. And let's set it to rotate maybe five times. So that would be 360 degrees uh, times five. So let's go 360 times 5 and you can do inline calculations 1800 make another keyframe and there's our barrels and they're spinning okay so the next thing you want to do if you want to move the minigun all you got to do is just group all these objects so let's select all the objects for your minigun hit alt G to group them let's go to a side view and let's just for the time being let's say this cylinder here is going to be the stand that the minigun is going to be sitting on okay so there's our stand let's rename the null object that was created for the gun to whoops if I can spell right minigun and we need to move this object axis the reason why we need to move it is because if we want to get the gun to spin, if we go into the coordinates tab and we start to move it, that doesn't look very good. It's actually spinning in the wrong place. The pivot point is going to be the place in which it's attached to the stand that it's on. So to do that, we need to move this uh, object axis without actually moving the object. So we need to go into the object axis tool, which is this little uh, orange arrow here and now we need to move this over here to the correct pivot point go into a front view just to make sure that it's lining up with the post and it's not we need to move that over down just a little bit that's good get out of that mode and now when we rotate it now it's rotating at the correct place just like that and we can uh, I don't know if it would actually bank over to the side or not, but there we go. Pitch forward, pitching up. And we could actually go a little further with this, and we can add a target tag to it so we can get this gun to automatically follow a target. So to do that, Cinema 4D uses the Z axis as the axis in which to point to the target. Uh, but if you notice, the Z axis here, which is the blue axis handle, it's actually pointing off to the side and the barrels are pointing the other way so we need to rotate this object axis around so that the blue arrow which is the Z actually points down the way of the barrel so let's go back to a side view and you notice we need to rotate this in this direction so let's go back to the object axis tool go to the rotate tool hold down shift 
and that will move in five degree increments and let's rotate this 90 degrees. And for some reason, the gun has actually been twisted. It's actually moved a bit. There we go. Let's go back to the object axis. 90 degrees. There we go. That looks good. Get out of that mode. Now the Z is pointing down the barrel. So now let's just create something to act as the target. And we'll name this sphere to target. We'll move it out here and up a little bit. Right click on the minigun, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Target, drag the target sphere into the target box there. And now all we have to do is take the target and animate the target, and the gun will automatically follow the target. Just like that. And if we hit play, then our barrels start to spin. And now we've got a mini gun spinning following our target. Just like that. Okay, so that's how I put the mini gun together. That's how I modeled it. And all I did was I just added a black material to it. Nothing special about that. So moving right along, I've been getting a lot of questions about the destiny model that I did. Uh, it's not actually finished yet, uh, but a lot of people were kind of wondering how I did the pipes on the hull. And I kind of thought the video was self-explanatory about how I did it, but I guess some of you are probably beginners when it comes to Cinema 4D and you just don't know where these tools are at and how to get to them. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to make pipes. All we need to do is say you want to make a custom pipe. Let's take a linear spline and I'm just going to draw out a path here. This is going to be the path for our pipe. Alright, that's good enough. Something like that. And now this is going to be the path that the piping is going to take. So now we need to determine the profile shape of the actual pipe. Now if you take a pipe and you look at it from the top like you're looking down the pipe, what's, what's the profile shape of a pipe? It's round. It's a circle, right? And just in case you don't believe me, here's a cylinder. Let's look at it like we're looking down the cylinder. And oh look, a circle. So we need to get a circle spline. And currently that's a little too big. So let's go and change the radius down to something like maybe 30. Okay, so now we want to go get a sweep nerb. This is what's going to build the pipe for us. So we'll grab the sweep nerb. And we need to take these two splines and we need to drag them as drag them into the sweep nerve then th they're going to become children so let's grab both of them drag them in and make them a child and you can see the pipe is starting to come together now it's very important keep this in mind the profile spline needs to be the first child and the spline used that's that's uh, going to create the path that the spline or that the pipe is going to follow that needs to be the second child if you reverse them and you take the path spline and put it first, now we've got this mess here. So be sure that you have them in the right order. So be sure that the profile spline is first. Okay, now let's go in here and figure out why this looks rather crappy. So if we click on the sweep nerve, first thing you notice is that there are a lot of subdivisions in here this is actually a ridiculous amount for piping and for those of you that don't know what subdivisions are that's basically just all of these lines way too many subdividing lines in here so let's see if we can fix that so let's go over to the circle spline and for the intermediate points let's take that from adaptive to uniform and we'll take the number down to 2. Okay, now we've just alleviated a lot of those lines. 
but just to show you how much optimization just that one little setting changed let's change the circle spline back to where it was at adaptive let's click on sweep nerb go to objects object information and you notice here that the polygon count is currently set to seven or seven yeah seven hundred and forty four so if we go back and change that back to uniform go back to object information and we've just reduced it down to 128 so you're probably thinking well that looks kinda good but look at those corners piping isn't linear like that it needs to be rounded well I would agree so let's go to the pass spline go to point mode let's go to a top view and let's grab these corners so I'm just gonna select these corners and I'm doing that with the live selection tool here just select those corners and now we need to bevel them now usually some people may say well hey look let's just make them soft interpolated so go to structure edit spline soft interpolation and suddenly now we've got this big snaky looking thing here that's not gonna work so let's undo that let's go to structure edit spline chamfer the default setting is 5 so let's try 5 I gotta do is hit apply and it rounded it out but it's not really a lot so let's undo and let's really take this up maybe to like 45 there we go now we're getting some nice rounded corners that looks a lot better so we'll get out of point mode we'll turn the sweetener back on there we go now our piping is looking a little better let's go back and check the polygon count and it's jumped up to 1760 so let's take the path spline and let's change the intermediate point setting here for the angle to 15 go back and check the polygon count and now we've brought it back down to 704 so that is how you create pipes that's basically how I did the piping for the uh, Destiny, although at one point for a certain part of the ship what I actually did was uh, I actually created a grid and I'll just quickly show you how I did that take a plane make the plane editable go into line mode and just kinda select select some paths here and then hold down control to deselect all these other lines that you don't want something like that then we're going to use the edge to spline command so go to structure edit spline edge to spline it creates a spline as a child of the plane don't need the plane anymore we can delete it take the spline now go into point mode bevel those corners using the chamfer tool and you notice that when we do that it's actually a linear bevel there that doesn't look very good so to do that go to the spline change the intermediate points you can see it's set to none we need to set that to adaptive and let's take that up to 15 then we'll go back and chamfer those edges again there we go grab a sweep nerb circle spline let's change it to uniform down to two let's put the path spline in first circle spline in second that is way too big so we need to take the circle spline take the radius down to maybe something like five and there's your piping so that's how I did the piping okay so hopefully that answers everybody's questions because those are the main questions that I've been getting the minigun the piping and on the mp3 player tutorial uh, I know I've been getting some other questions regarding doing a match moving tutorial and there was also another one someone else wanted me to do a tutorial on the snow video that I uploaded not too long ago unfortunately right now creating the snow tutorial and creating the match moving tutorial 
that's going to take us uh, you know a considerable amount of time to put together there is a lot of things involved in doing something like that uh, perhaps maybe in the future uh, when I get some time maybe I can kinda put something together very basic and simple uh, then again I can't make any promises like I said there's a lot involved uh, so hopefully this answers everyone's questions and if anybody else asks I'm just gonna direct them to this video so thank you for watching guys